evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Todd. Say it again. Marchevka. Like Marchevka. Oh, Marchevka. Okay. Marchefka. For Triangle Park Properties. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for uh, um, your time tonight. Um, I'm here to, um, to uh, talk about the proposed plan uh, for um, I'm the owner of Triangle Park Properties, an LLC, and uh, we own the site here at 13 Russell Street. Um, it's the uh, former Getty gas station. And uh, I'm here to um, propose what I would plan to do uh, with the site. Um, it's uh, very, due to the size of it, it's a very limited limited site to do a lot with it. Um, do you have a street address for that? Uh, 13, 13 Russell Street, yeah. And uh, I can maybe show you this picture yeah. here, probably a better uh, current, current site. As you can see, it's sort of the uh, you know, a, a gateway to, to, to have it here. And, um, what um, my proposal is, is to um, uh, bring it back to the retail um, pre-existing use that it was. I mean, uh, again, there's very, very limited use to it. So um, I met with the building department and uh, you know, he just asked that I come in and I check with you guys to see if there's anything um, that is uh, required. Um, but um, my, my proposal is to... Um, there, there, there's, there's three main structures actually. There's a building and there's a canopy, you know, on the sign basically on the small site. And uh, you know, my proposal is to um, take the existing building and uh, um, you know uh, renovate it um, and bring it back to its you know uh, the, the use, the retail use that it was before. Um, the business is. Uh, Spaces for rent. It's um, it's a Northampton-based business uh, that's sort of a privately held uh, portable storage container business. Um, out of here, I'd be um, you know keeping the, the same retail use, you know, with the exception of just to be locks and different different things where people could come in and, and, and rent a container from. Um, and uh, we're um, planning structural, you know, evaluation on the canopy um, and obviously you know cleaning it up and. Uh, that um, you know, currently it's um, you know it's it's unused um, and uh, it's uh, you know we we've had to re uh, re you know paint over graffiti twice this year so far. You know I've had to do a lot of weed cleanup around it and everything. Uh, you know so um, you know you can like to store your containers. Well, I, I was thinking a display for one, um, but then um, I, we're not going to put anything there. Uh, it's more going to be just a place where you can come in and reserve your container. And over in Northampton Industrial Park, we have you know a bulk site where we can do it. And the containers that we um, you know rent out are um, they get delivered to the site or wherever the business or resident is. They they load them up and then they'll then we bring them back to the site for storage. Okay. So, but no storage will be done here on the site. You mentioned the sign. The sign. Depending what you what your plan is for the sign, the sign is no longer grandfathered because it's been not used for so many years. So you're allowed a sign, but it cannot be internally illuminated. No internal. Okay. Okay. It has to be externally illuminated or backlit. Right. Okay. Can that same stanchion be used? Long as it's as long as you stay within 64 square feet. Sure. Okay. So it's got to it's got to conform to zone, but you can yeah. use the same stanchion. The same okay. stanchion. Okay. Yeah. Provided it's obviously it's up to the building inspector. Provided it's in decent, I don't know what kind of condition it's in. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we're we're paying yeah. about the structural, you know, assessment. Yeah. We, we've talked to them about the building, and we've had uh, you know some other um, general contractors come in, and you know there is there, there is a very good possibility to save uh, you know save save the existing building. You know, we need to do roof, new, new so side. The build the, the the reconstruction of the existing building would be the same size. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, undercover. Uh, I mean, it's still there because it's there and still, however, condition it's in. At least it is that much the grandfather, correct, Bill? Uh, yeah, as long as it's structurally, as long as there's not a wanting to tear it down, I guess, that would uh, you preserve the 
the use of it, but you'll, you'll need to talk to the building inspector about the canopy, obviously. That's right. probably yeah, yeah. We've been in touch with him. He's asking for a structural assessment, which we'll you know, provide yeah. to him. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the biggest comment we, that I guess the planning board has is that the sign is lots of grandfathering, so you could still use the same stanchion, same location, 64 square feet, and externally illuminated, mm -hmm. not, in, not internally illuminated, put it that way. Okay. So okay. what kind of traffic do you expect here? Because that's a horrible location. Yeah, I mean, because it's sort of a, a more of a targeted you know, market uh, application where it'd be people moving and you know, looking for moving supplies and doing the retail thing, and, um, we don't anticipate being anything you know, that would be, uh, we're not going to do any gas, obviously. You know, we're just going to have it for, for that. So we feel as though it'll, it'll be you know, less than it was when, when it was used for gasoline. But, um, so long as it was a viable gasoline station, yeah. And one of the problems that it was, it was, was the traffic getting in and out of there. I mean, um, if you were if you were eastbound on Route Nine, it wasn't bad. But if you were anything, and you and you wanted to continue <coughs> eastbound, but anything else was yeah. disaster. I mean, getting out of that location is as well. It's like cross path road across the street. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you know, we're we're ready to um, you know. Um, it, the place has been an eyesore for a while. Um, okay. we're, we're ready to, um, you know, we're prepared to, to, to start beautifying the site. You know, we recognize it's important to use the location where it is, and you know, and um, you know, just looking to you know, work with the building department to, okay. you know, getting getting a permit okay. to I mean, start construction. I mean, pretty much your your your, your areas, yeah. You, I mean, as far as planning board goes, except for the sign, everything else is there, and you're going to reuse what's so there. How big is the existing building? Uh, I'm not quite sure on the exact size. Um, I, I had to guess probably just by graph, probably ten by 120, something like that. So. And rough. That's more yeah, than that. It's it's five, to 250 yeah. square feet. Yeah. Square, yeah. Feet. square feet. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, for me, it's, it's under 250 square feet, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's small. It's pretty very small. small. Yeah, and again, you know, we're, we're a very small site, so there's not yeah. a lot. We, <coughs> yeah, we're that, that's. I mean, I know there was at one point there was somebody there was a Mr. Callahan against a real estate guy talking about there was somebody that wanted to turn it into a hot dog stand, and I made a couple of comments about well, you know, the other the board of health has a few regulations on it. I said, but that's an awful lot of hot dogs to sell. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so if it's less than a thousand square feet. It's uh, exempt, exempt from site plan approval anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval, it being less than a thousand square feet. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Matt, motion passes for a zero with one absent. So we're sort of going to clean up a nice sort. Now, yes. It'll, it'll, now, somebody it'll, could take that Legion sign that was put up in the 1950s on the way to Northampton and sure. restore that. That would be helpful. Okay. Okay. Very good. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah. When you do, when you do come, get probably get a sign if you come back, but just let us know what the sign looks like. Sure. We'll okay. Yeah, sixty-four inch square feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Josh, Klein, yeah. Josh Klein. Hello. Hey. Actually, you can leave that in there. Oh, okay. You can grab that easel too. Yeah, I appreciate it. I will be back. Right. I hope. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Josh Klein. I'm a licensed professional engineer and development manager for WS Development. I'm here on behalf of Mountain Farms Mall property. I'm currently constructing the two buildings out front on Russell Street. So there's kind of two items here in front of the board tonight to talk about. Um, the first item I want to talk about was the signage. I was here a couple weeks ago, um, and I appreciate the, the feedback and kind of the board's guidance moving forward. It was really helpful to be able to get that info to our tenants, and we, you know, we totally respect um, kind of the board and the town's wishes regarding the signage. Um, we did have a question, and we kind of more of a clarification um, for our tenants, and I I think you did kind of mention backlit signage just before. We wanted to clarify if um, backlit or halo effect um, would be permitted by the board. So these are, we kind of brought some example imagery. So again, the letters would be completely solid, not translucent at all. There'd be no 
the light wouldn't be emitted to towards traffic or right. towards the road. It'd be behind the signage being illuminated towards the building. Well, straight it's, like, it's like a silhouette. A silhouette, yes. It's like what's, halo effect. What's the light source? What kind of light is that? Um, most likely it'd be LED. Um, we'd have to, you know, each, we'd have to see what the tenant sign vendors um, yeah. are proposing, but we try to keep it uniform as possible across the building. It's not going to be fluorescent back there pushing out. No, no, not like your old Vegas style. By, by no means, this would be a very, very the, the, clean. The, the, these two that you're showing with the solid letters with, with that, that's what we consider backlit. Perfect. I'm not sure what this one exactly is. Yeah, but try yeah, to that get probably close to the same thing. But yeah, there's something that it, give, it gives you the impression of an internally illuminated sign almost, mm -hmm. but it lights up, it, it illuminates the letters. With, mm -hmm. Like you said, it's like a halo. Exactly. That's exactly what we and it believe backlit means. Great. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure that backlit means this much to different people. So, <laughs> um, okay. No, that's great news. We'll relay that to our tenants um, just to kind of give you guys an update. Obviously, the building's going up great. We're, we're right on schedule. Well, um, what, what is the schedule? So we are looking to kind of turn over to our tenants within the next few months. L.O. Bean will be getting in there as long, along with 110 Grill um, to kind of start retrofitting, getting their spaces um, up. And we expect uh, a fall fall of this year opening for LLB 110 Grill. Um, hopefully, five guys will be right behind them as well. You can't open five guys. You have no idea how many people are asking me when five guys are going to open. They're chomping, <laughs> literally chomping at the bit. When five, they don't, I mean, LLB and OK and the other ones, but they are super <laughs> anxious for five guys. And it's like every time I see various people, it's like, when five guys? I don't know. Sometime this, this fall. That's all I know. <laughs> That's great to hear. Now, when we're when we're back, we'll give you we'll keep you guys updated. The uh, the big marquee sign from well, I guess it was first net now Florence Savings Bank. That's coming down. Is that correct? Correct. Per the the permit, we are. I okay. believe actually both signs have been taken down. Okay. The bank I, and I, have, I haven't seen the first. I haven't really been paying attention, even though I go by it every day. <laughs> yes, they've been taken down, and and we're okay. You know, as of now, we haven't shown anything of what we're going to put back up and we're still kind of in that problem. We want to kind of make sure it's the best possible signs we're right. still kind of thinking okay. about. So you will come back to us with the actual signs? When, when yes, the, in, the individual okay. tenants will be presenting their, their sign packages okay. to the board. Uh, the second item I wanted to discuss was um, the Manny's building or former Manny's building. We you know, with kind of all the work that's going on in Russell Street, we've been getting a lot of a lot of action on the property. Or you know, we do have a lot of interested tenants, um, and we have a really nice opportunity right now to take that that Manny's building um, and be able to get three. Um, we're looking at right now three tenants. It may end up by the time we submit for a building permit to be two tenants. Um, but we're looking to take the Manny's building and we're requesting tonight a site a, a waiver of site plan approval or review um, as the goal would be to kind of keep the structure intact we're not adding any square footage we're keeping the character that's there um, we would really just be updating the building to kind of re reflect a more you know a little bit more of a modern storefront and your typical kind of glass that you see today uh, so here's the kind of the existing building it's really a single user center it would really be tough um, and you know talking with tenants we wouldn't really be able to give them the presence they need to, to be a successful kind of multi-tenant building here so we're looking to kind of take the gable roof down um, and kind of create a kind of solid um, storefront across the front now again we'd be kind of using the same type of mullions and moldings and and the character of the building would stay the same we would we really just be looking to kind of put three tenants um, in this space so, you know, based on not and kind of in, in past approvals we've had for you know Planet Fitness, et cetera, we you know we're hoping that the board um, can will grant us kind of the waiver of site plan approval as we won't we're not increasing the building. You're not increasing the size, so I think I'm willing to grant you site plan approval. However, before you once you decide on a design, I would like to see what you're going to do. Okay. Okay. So this is this is the proposed elevation. Okay. Um, the signage we were 
we were planning that the tenants, as the tenants come in and finalize their package, again, we would, you know, as the previous special permit, you know, the signage would be per town requirements. Um, we'd probably look to incorporate halo effect or backlit kind of per earlier discussion. Um, but this would be the aesthetic of the building. Um, again, the only change would be if a, if one of the tenants decided that they, that we would, you know, kind of split the building to two tenants. So right now we're, we're looking at three, but there is the potential that it would be a two tenant building. Okay. So you're actually looking. That would be actually that would be actually the, the quote we're we're looking to waiver that right there. Correct. And then again, any any modification we would you know bring it back to the board. Okay. But but yes, this is uh, the elevation we are moving forward with. So could you? Email me this. Yes. So we can have it in a re electronic form. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> what is the address of that? I don't want to give you the wrong one. Um, that would be good. <laughs> so. If can I get? Can I include that in, in your email? I believe it's South Maple, but I, I don't want to. Okay. All right. You know what that mall used to be called? I do not. It used to be called the Dead Mall. <laughs> Nothing was going on there. Well, not anymore. Yeah, we're doing everything I, we can to kind of keep uh, you know making it a great place, part of it. We had a traffic engineer come in here know, a year and a half, two years ago, and just go through a bunch of stuff. We're all trying to. T Parking to traffic patterns out here, and it kind of just fell by the wayside. Have you heard anything else about so that? So we, we got approval from the select board for the improvements, the striping improvements in South Maple, right. um, and that will be part of the improvements as the for the buildings on we call it Phase Two, but mm -hmm. the buildings along Russell Street. So right. I believe this spring those will be implemented. Um, we're working right now on that. We're re working on that new driveway in South Maple right now, kind of that okay. design. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for conversion of the former Manny's to two to three separate retail outlets um, with no increase in square footage and the final sign designs to be approved separately. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 401 episode. Fascinating stuff. And I'll get you that email probably tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Josh, is that overhead door currently there or is that new? That overhead, this door here is yeah. currently there. Okay. Um, we yeah. are planning on adding one door for like a landlord closet utility room. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Any other? Thank you. Yeah. I can't remember the reason last names. Squire. 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 Oh, yes, Squire? Squire. Oh, I was going to say, I know that I can see Squire. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, go ahead. Perfect. Um, I'm here uh, from, I'm from the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of the owners of uh, Central Rock Gym. Um, uh, 165 Russell is the address there. Um, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, they put on an additional building and a parking expansion their property. Um, extends behind the the bike shop and the and hillside pizza over here right now this is all just green space um, their request was um, to see if the board would entertain the notion of putting in an overflow you know, gravel parking lot in the back in that green space for when they have major events competitions right now they're they utilize you know the park uh, the parking lot of the American Legion uh, for overflow Sometimes with the with a pet center, sometimes with a um, you know bike shop, it doesn't always work out depending on when things happen. They just like to have they have the space. Um, they have talked with the owners of the bike shop uh, about accessing through their uh, through their property, so there'd be no new curb cuts. It would be an isolated you know gravel lot. We said that we could do it and potentially um, as, as stone dust or um, you know or gravel or it could be some sort of curb. So when you say events, do they have events where they're 
They have competition. They have large competitions, okay. regional so, competitions. Okay. So, so it's, it's not like a smorgasbord. No, 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 okay. no. They have it's. I mean, when they have these big regional competitions, yeah. there's a couple hundred people, and it's from you know all over the you know yeah. northeast, and there's usually people out there directing traffic at that time. So um, it would most likely be the staff lot, place where coaches park, you know that kind of thing. But um, so that was <clears throat> that was the request, and I just wanted to see if that was something that. Um, the board would see as, as an issue. That not what about the green space? Will they still have enough green space? There would be enough green space, yes. I'm mean, sure there's enough green space. And again, the idea of this would be to try to make this as green as possible, even you know, we we've suggested using those those turf paver type units so that can be cleaned. where um I believe there was some reserve parking put into those things. Was it there when when it was built? There was some reserve parking back here. <coughs> oh okay. Then out, yeah. Okay. So you you already you meet your parking requirements. Yes. You meet your green space requirements. Yes. Even with converting it to parking. Mm -hmm. uh, I do recall that the abutter to the east did come to the public hearings. So certainly it's of interest to the <clears throat> um, to the people. So I don't think sure. we could just do a waiver for something. Yeah, I, this I big. think we'd have to at least notify. I mean, we probably should hold a, a modified site plan approval really to address the drainage, mm -hmm. I mean, appearance, put a couple of shrubs around it so that people could complain about and light, dot light or something like that. That's, sure. the, that's, that's a minor thing. Yep. But make sure the drainage would comply. <laughs> what kind of drainage would it be underground? Uh, well, again, I, the idea is to minimize what they need to do. That. They just want to have a stable surface to be able to park cars for these events that happen, you know, I'm going to guess, you know, a dozen, two dozen times a year, maybe, if I had to pick a number. Okay. And so, ideally, you know, like I said, this, what we've suggested is those little, you know, those turf pavers that allow you to, you know, stabilize the the, the turf and mow it and maintain it as turf, but it's it's got a gravel base under it, so it allows you to park cars on it and use it, you know, it's a stable surface, you don't get rut, ruts in the, you know, in the soil, but for all intents and purposes, it looks and acts and, and you know smells like grass the rest of the year. Um, so with that, there you know we really wouldn't. There's, there's no way to manage the stormwater because it's going to infiltrate straight down. All, all we want is something from a from mm -hmm. whatever you choose to sell. You're, you're saying sure. it's gonna, you're, you're saying it's going to percolate. Yep. So you get, just need get, get, to get get the consulting engineers to re it percolates and yep. we're all in good shape. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, we're not I mean, changing the cover I mean, at all, so that yeah. would be, be I mean, the same. If, I mean, if you can get grass to, gra grass to percolation, you can park on it, that's, that's about as good as it gets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that the abutters will have concerns about drainage, and uh, so address them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably have concerns about lighting because you move the parking lot a uh, hundred feet closer to their backyard, so. Uh, will there be lights at it? No, I don't. Anticipate that to be any lighting okay, back there. So the, no, the goal is to minimize basically that. Basically, some shrubs to uh, minimize lightage if they if when, it, when, it, when it's operated at night. If there's yep. The, yeah, uh, basically, I think you want to have an operating plan that yep. you can show the people that yeah. that there's going to be a a protocol for who parks there and when. Sure, sure. What the, how late is it open at night? Just out of curiosity. Um, it varies a little bit. I know mornings. I think. Seven o'clock is the earliest they open. I don't know, five, six days a week. Mm -hmm. um, the busy nights, you know, Saturday night, Friday night, maybe even Thursday. I think they're open until ten, but that's the latest they go. <clears throat> Most other nights, it's nine, I think. Mm -hmm. And the big events usually, um, almost exclusively, are held on the weekends. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, clearly they knew their market. It's it's uh, uh, there's it's a may there's there's ten in downtown Boston now. Wow. It'd probably be nice to have a um, a schedule of the events too, so that Yeah, they vary. Well I, I understand they vary, they vary but you know, just like yep. this is what we did last year. Sure. And this is when we did it and mm -hmm. times of days, things like that. Yep. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure there have been any complaints about regular usage, but right. you know, again, just want to help you get ahead of the curve here. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so we'll submit a, a site plan application. Yeah. So this will allow for more events to occur or more people to come to events? No, it just avoids their need to um, negotiate with all the various yeah, okay. abutters for overflow parking and crossing Route 9. And yeah. there's, there's a lot of reasons why that doesn't work real well, <clears throat> especially because most of them are, are uh, youth events. There's a lot of kids, you know, siblings going back and forth. And the Legion <clears throat> parking lot has been cut in half. You realize that? The what? The Legion parking lot has been essentially well, cut that's, in half. Well, that's the other reason they want to yeah. do this, because there's nowhere else to go. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Great. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Are we going to be able to vote on this? What was that? Are we going to be able to vote? Yeah, because we already approved conditionally. Okay. So even the application. All, all, all we need to do is approve the appearance. Okay. We don't need four or five to do that. We can just do that with, with the majority we have because okay. of the, the actual. Special permit has already been approved. And you have the copies. Then. I got copies. Now, this was just for everybody's information. This is what he gave us. Now, what color is the roof? Black. So I'm assuming they're going to match the other two existing sections. Okay. The black, or black, or black, or gray. Now, just because this has so many trees behind it, and if you've been there, there are no trees behind it. Thank so, you. what I did was very simple. Blocked out the trees. <laughs> Amazing what you can do with a computer. Yeah. So this is the building hasn't changed. But just to give you a better perspective, yeah. I, I didn't could make it blue. <laughs> to make a blue, I, I, although lately with the uh, what you call it, with the rain, it's more of a That's white what anyway. Like, right. So yeah. what's the street address? Three seventy three, right? Yes. So all we need to do is approve the building. The tower has been removed, the sign has been removed, and the building is all white with a black or gray roof. I'm sure they won't have a problem because they're going to want to match the existing because I believe these two sections are fine. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's like a darker, have, darker gray or right. something. I'm pretty sure it's black gray. Okay. I'll make a motion. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the new. Building design and paint scheme at 2373 River Drive, Exotic Auto. Do you have a second? I would second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes with three, one abstain, and one absent. Thank you. Thank you. Just one other question. Um, did it get registered yet? Did it get? No. No. Carrying it around in my bag. Do you think it would be? Could we have 20 days after that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any idea when that would be? Uh, I spent all day moving. <laughs> so, um, moving, moving. Um, hopefully this week. I moved across the lobby. Oh, really? You moved offices? Another I moved offices. New suite in the same building, but oh. 50 feet, 50 miles. It's about doesn't same. matter. Yeah, back up um, and move is everything. Yeah, I'm working on it. I won't take the full 90 days. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Susan? No. No. Patty. Patty and Ken. Ken. Come on up. Patty with an I or a Y? A Y. Should we just sit here? Yeah. So you might recall that um, I met with you in March. Yes. Yep. Talking about the stormwater bylaw. Yes. And this was uh, the last correspondence I had. Right. Um, and it was just a summary of that meeting and sure. some okay. of the um, next steps that, you know, I think were going to be some questions for I council. did give you the bylaw, right? What's that? I did email you the bylaw. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I watched that. I took two pages of notes watching you. Think. Oh, <laughs> this, this is. John Mischkowski um, was beaten in the re-election by Mark Dunn. He's the he replaced John on a board, so he's okay. brand new. This Mark, is his architect, Mark Gray. Okay. But don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you aware of PVPC? What we do with them? Uh, we pay them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> years ago, I do mean years ago, we had two different temporary, short-term town planners with grants. <laughs> And both of them turned out at the time to be 
not so good for us. So when the grants ran out, they moved on, and we worked with PVPC, and for the last, I don't know how many years, it's got to be 12, 15. 12 to 15 yeah. years, we've had various uh, people dedicated from PVPC to work with Hadley on zoning bylaws and amendments and a lot of other things, including redoing our master plan, which is a separate grant, but was still with PVPC. And we renewed the contract every year. It has been consistently $7,500 a year. And that has changed, although what has happened is because of the cost of things, their hours for 7500 has dropped. So we got to start looking at either increasing the cost so we can get a little bit more out of you or whatever if we, if we decide to do that. But that's beside the point right now. Uh, but anyways, we, they've been acting as a consultant to us and with us to um, look at various aspects of zoning bylaws and stuff like that and kind of as a, I don't know what I call it, an ad hoc part-time town planner and it works, we've been working out very well and Larry Smith had been with us for the last probably three or four years and he retired two years ago now, right? A year and a half ago? No, I think, was it last summer? Last summer? Yeah. Okay, early last summer, right. He, yeah. oh, that's right. And uh, Patty has, re you, have, you have replaced? No. No. I, so I work on the stormwater side of okay. things. And so that my expertise is sort of on the environmental side of things and the stormwater permit okay. and what communities need to do. But Ken is really, um, Larry's, he's a land use planner, has this, you know, similar expertise. To so Ken will be replacing Larry. Right? Correct. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, the, the woman that worked for us lasted two meetings and resigned. I hope you have better success. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so right now we're working on MS4, which is a Municipal massive sanitary project storm separation. statewide. Yeah. Yeah. And certain communities are regulated and others are not. Right. Yeah. Based on population density. Okay. So continue. So um, I guess uh, Ken and I had, you know, we had talked right after um, I met with you last time. And so one of the last notes here is about how to proceed. And um, I think that we want to just get your okay on our plan. And I think, um, I think it was you, Bill, suggested that we sort of have this timeline that aims for October town meeting. Is that right? Yes, that would be. Uh, because I think we have to have things in place by June 30th. You're yeah, right. That's right. So I'd like, to, I think it would be good to aim for October okay. with the fallback of um, May if we can't get to everything. Okay. Right. So um, I think one of the most productive ways to go, and I've been doing this in, in Belchertown most lately is to try to bring together a working group because the stormwater responsibility of the permit doesn't really fall in any one area um, and it, to bring that expertise from the different departments or boards is really useful so i think um, the one of the questions that came up last time was you know having a combined authority with the conservation commission and even the building inspector so the idea would be to create a working group that sits down, looks at, because Corinne Micey Munz, my um, colleague, had worked to try to um, extract the stormwater material from the zoning bylaw and create a standalone bylaw um, right. on, for a stormwater management permit. And there's a couple of complications now. The um, state is working to update the stormwater handbook so that it, it is, um, it agrees with the EPA MS4 permit. And so that's in process. And they're hoping, the last report I had was they're hoping to have that work completed by February and March so that municipalities will be in a position to say, okay, the stormwater handbook is, you know, those are all the standards. And we should still do that anyways but probably one of the better ways to go is set up a stormwater bylaw and then associated regulations so that you have, you know, the, the sort of the critical stuff in the bylaw, 
but then you might put standards, um, submission requirements, some of those other things that end up making a bylaw really long. Um, it might not be completely finalized for October town meeting. And this would be a zoning or a general? It would be a general, yeah. So a general stormwater um, management permit bylaw. And that would be under the jurisdiction of who? Well, I think at your last meeting you were asking the question, could we have an authority that included the planning board, the building inspector, and the conservation commission? But then if you're issuing regulations, can the planning board promulgate the regulations that apply to all those authorities? And that was one of the questions for town council. So um, okay, we can issue all the regulations you want. We have no enforcement authority. Well, the zoning enforcement officer enforces yeah. them. Yeah. Which is who is in our, in our case the building inspector. Okay. All right. Um, just early in, you just said regulation depends on population density. What is you that? No, mean? it's the um, the MS four permit, whether you're regulated by it or not. Oh, what what is it? How do you calculate population density? Well, they look at census tracts. And so, apparently, has a population of five thousand. And then what you divide it by the square miles in town? It, it's uh, census tracts. So. If you look at it, so there's this interactive census viewer that I just saw the other day. But that's what EPA uses to determine which communities are regulated. And it's really probably only a part of Hadley that's regulated. It's probably not like Springfield where the entire um, municipality is regulated. But most communities end up when they adopt um, code they have it apply to the whole community. So you're not like looking at this map trying to figure out is this project going to be different from that project? That would create like so much confusion. And in general, the standards are pretty good in terms of, you know, protecting waters. Like Lake Warner might not be in the fold of your sort of your regulated permitted area, but you might want to have some standards up in that area of town. Well, the standards would apply to Amherst, not to Hadley. That's where the problem comes from. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, David Nixon, our town administrator, had said, uh, and I wasn't following exactly, but that some of it depends on what, where the watershed goes, so that water that doesn't go directly into the Connecticut River is not subject to MS4. It, get, it, it gets very complicated, and so you're regulated wherever your system is delivering to a water. Um, and so, you so you're responsible, and this gets into a whole other part of the permit, not okay. this part of the permit. It has to do with illicit discharges and sampling and how much sampling you have to do. Yeah. So I guess what we were proposing is to just bring a working group together. So, so you're thinking like, I have sorry. No, that's okay. One planning board member, one conservation, and the building inspector, a group of three would be enough? Yeah, and maybe the town, I don't know if David Nixon has time, but the town administrator. No, I don't, no? I don't okay. I'm not sure that he's going to have a lot to bring to the party on this one. You really want the three people, these are three departments that that would collaborate. It would on collaborate and, and would be in, in the enforcement group, if you would, yeah. one way or another. Someone from DPW? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Would, my mouth. Yeah. You think DPW? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if your Board of Health is really active, but sometimes. Yeah, they are, but. Well, in, in the existing bylaw, they're named as one of the governing bodies. Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask him. I would think that uh, Janice Stone would be the conservation. Probably, yeah. Um, I'll be the planning board rep, unless somebody has a, has a problem with that. No. <laughs> Tim, I mean, Tim is Tim. Um, Chris is Chris, and I'll ask the Board of Health. Probably be Jeff. I mean, not Jeff, but Greg. 
but we'll see. Okay. And once I get we get our group together, what, when would you when would you want to have meetings? During the day, evenings? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would think that if um, you know, and I think on your agenda you have listed other maybe other items that you want to look for with planning assistance um, that you know this this work wouldn't happen in a planning board meeting it should happen oh at, 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 outside the planning board, I agree yeah. but I'm just wondering what would you want it to be does it matter to you if it's during the day or in the evenings I think I mean I don't know how other people's schedules are but during okay. the day would be great okay cause and you know maybe a series of four to five meetings depending on how, how complicated it gets because yeah. One thing we haven't done with the community yet is to really um, talk about the off-site mitigation possibilities with redevelopment projects, which it sounds like from tonight, you know, um, the stuff that's happening at the mall, that there's redevelopment stuff, though those wouldn't have triggered anything because there's not really any disturbance. Um, but where you have redevelopment, to have that option of off-site mitigation so that's really a discussion that needs to happen. We have a pretty good guidance document that I think I emailed. Okay. Um, so there needs to be a conversation around that. So just in terms of this, I would say three to four meetings. And then the offsite mitigation, I don't, I can't really gauge how long that conversation might take yet. Okay. Yeah, probably want to keep these meetings to, whether it's at the day or evening, I'm guessing no more than two hours beyond that. Oh yeah, no, yeah. no, that's um, deadly. <laughs> what, what? Time, what days and times work best for you, Kim? Um, really, I don't have any specific days um, other than the planning board evening, or you know, the, the planning boards that I do serve. Um, so, really, <laughs> really, any time of the day, I think morning is preferable. Um, okay, so it looks like three of the five are staff here. Janice, right. uh, Tim, and Chris. Right. So, and if it depending who's on a board of health, we're retired, semi-retired. Okay. So we're okay. reasonably available during a day. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so we we could do like monthly meetings or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it would be helpful to sort of maybe run these questions by town council before we meet, so that those are at least will be cleared out. Okay. I mean, there were questions that you asked me last time yep, that I, was, I couldn't answer them. And if there's still questions that you have, um, I think the second bullet was um, was the one that relates to the permit. Okay. So at the uh, town meeting last Thursday, finally the issue of maintaining the town system of drainage ditches was addressed. Well, you just need to uh -huh. talk about it. hasn't been done for yeah, years. I'll, uh, you want to ask that him that yes, question? Yes, I will forward but it's going to cause this a lot of to Joel and ask to him to focus on Yeah. Have you dealt with that in other communities, the maintenance of drainage ditches? And no, not, not ditches. No. Yeah. Because we're talking, you know, eventually a couple, I'll two, three million up. dollars having to be spent to dredge all these ditches, which have not been maintained uh, over the years, which are causing swamps to be... Uh, and everything else. Okay. And, they, and so there was an allocation network, request. Right? Yeah, and all, all the ditches kind of network, but maybe not into one, but there might be several networks. Yeah. Are Wednesdays good for you, Kim, in general? Yeah. Wednesday mornings? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to try to, I'll try to make it for like a Wednesday morning. That seems to okay. be, that works best for me. Okay. What time is good for you? 10-ish, okay. 11-ish, uh, that's usually. Okay. So ditches, ultimately, if the ditch system is working, the function of the system is to deliver the water from the fields or through the fields so the under the roads to the river. So yeah. that is part of your within MS the ambit of. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, like it discharges. They haven't been maintained for years. Yeah. Uh, years. We've got brooks that are filled in and don't work right. Yeah. Tell me about I think it. There's a backlog. I mean, there's so much infrastructure everywhere that, that needs yeah, There's a group that's not far from, well, I was saying not far, but close to Bill South, but what, 100 feet? When I was yeah. a kid, used to go fishing in it. And it was a great fishing hole. The water almost never flooded except in extreme rainstorms and, of course, the spring uh -huh. thaw. Now, it's 
always flooded because yeah. downstream it's filled in with silt and beavers. Yeah. And watercress, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah, and grass. I mean, it's, it's overgrown yep. yeah. for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. Um, I don't think the beavers are a huge problem. I really think is the biggest problem is the, the muck and the, no, the, problem. the, the, the overgrown. I've got a, some farmland there, and I've got a bridge that used to go across the brook, uh -huh. and the beavers dammed it up and blew it out. One so. once. So, okay. So, okay. so that process sounds okay. Yep, that, yep, that, that sounds good. I will be the one to get in touch and set up the group. Oh, Ken, do you have a card? Yeah. Cards, so we can email. <laughs> and I think I've had some emails, forwarded some emails from. Yeah. Just makes makes it easy for sure. Okay. Ken, call me up. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So I'll set up the, the group. We'll get in touch with Joel. We'll get back to you with the group and the, and the comments from Joel on the questions yeah. and try to set up the meeting for probably a couple of weeks. Great. So that we can start on this because it's to meet the October, October town meeting, we really got to get the article into the uh, town administrator by. Um, middle of August. Yeah, middle no no later than the end of August. So and I think that you have to go to the attorney general with this too, right? The what? Is that after? That's time? after. That's afterwards. Okay. Yeah, that that's the posting and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we got to be notified. I mean, we we can one month before town meeting is about the shortest. Depends if it's going to be the middle, or early, or end of October. Sometime this early, because the end of October it gives us an extra couple of weeks into September. Mm -hmm. Okay, so John, you don't know anything about a fall town meeting schedule yet, said have you? Um, let's see. No, I'll look it up. Is it posted yet? I don't know. I'm just asking if you have ever heard anything. I haven't I heard, heard any specific dates. No. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we'll take you that. We'll take care of that. Get the meeting going and. They'll probably be right here or in the planning board office next door. Okay, great. All right, thank you very much. Okay. I was wondering, um, since you know, since we're here, I know on the agenda there was discussion about things that you may be looking at other than the MS4 permit. Yes. Um, you know, I, I know that your town <coughs> meeting, you passed the zone, um, the marijuana bylaw. Um, I don't know if there was anything that you were looking. I was looking at the scope from FY19. And I wasn't sure as far as, um, you know, it looks like you were looking at affordable housing and TDR. Uh, we were also were looking at, at a section of definitions. Right. Consolidating our definitions into a more user-friendly format throughout the zoning bylaws. They're kind of scattered. There's some, some definitions that apply all over the place and some that are unique to different, different sections. So we're looking to try to, you know, Bill and I, talk, we, we talked about that even with uh, um, Larry when he was still here to try, we had some, a rough, couple rough draft to streamline them. The building inspectors also have been asking for that for a variety of reasons because they just try to find some things, they're not there. Other things aren't defined. So if you have definitions in each individual sections to put it all in the definition well, section. Well, that's a philosophical conversation <laughs> that yeah. we are having. Um, I think, well, personally, I would rather see the common terms defined, but uh, I don't want to wade through all of the solar field definitions if I am trying to figure out what is a structure. Right. So um, Basically, you've got, like I said, we've got some definitions that are unique to that particular section. Okay. Leave those there. Then we have Bill says the other ones that are common, like you know, structure. That's that's used throughout. Um, yeah. Setback and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Put those into a general section where it's you know categorically alphabetized or whatever you want to call it. But the ones that are unique, kind of leave them there. Otherwise, the definition is going to be horrendous. And you're going to have to go through, you know, what, you know, where is this, and where is it? If I'm in, I'm, I'm in a solar section. Well, what does that mean here? Or back and forth, where if it's right there, it's, you know, you you see where we're going. Yeah. So I think that's 
At least that's where we feel. The other two, the other three members may have a different opinion. So we just want to make sure that we're together and what is the what works best. Yeah. What do other towns do? Um, and kind of look and see. And did you say the, that you started that work with Larry already? Yes. yes. We okay. actually, yeah, there, there's, there's, there's quite a, a decent list of definitions okay. that have been compiled. Okay. So if you go digging a bit, you, should, you yeah. should find a huge yeah. file because, as I said, we've been working on this. We've been working together for 15 years or so. Yeah. Um, there should be a lot of stuff that is in various stages. Hopefully okay. everybody who worked on it named it consistently. So, um, I mean, I think the, the, when, I, when I looked at the, the file folder on the network drive, it looked like all of Hadley's stuff was organized in a way that you could, depending on the fiscal year, whatever you were working on, okay. you could good. find it. Okay. Um, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I also will be working with the town. Um, you received DLTA funds for an affordable housing uh, report. Um, right. The, the That's town, district local technical yes, assistance. This district local technical assistance. Um, and um, I'll be working with um, Lori Tanner at PVPC um, in convening that. Um, I did reach out to the... Um, town administrator and was just wondering whether or not it would be appropriate to bring it before the planning board or this should go toward uh, to a committee like an affordable housing committee the request was to maintain your uh, subsidized housing inventory right. over 10 percent right. um, and I'm not quite sure you know um, the appropriate committee and I haven't really gotten a response from the town administrator. Okay. I, I it, it will involve us to some degree. Sure. We do have an inclusionary zoning bylaw, oh, and a, yeah, a, uh, which applies to subdivisions and to senior housing. Okay. Uh, senior housing being the only allowed multiple dwelling per okay. lot. Okay. Um, we have had conversations in the past about having an affordable housing trust fund or affordable housing committee. There is supposed to be money allocated from, well, under the inclusionary zoning bylaw, you're either supposed to include a unit, provide a unit elsewhere in town, yeah. or uh, there was at one time a payment option, but there was no one to make the payment to because the affordable housing trust fund had never been set up. And so we did get some money from one developer. But we, we had some money, we have a sizable chunk of money that a developer put aside to the town, or is putting aside to the town when the bylaw, when that wording was in the bylaw. So we do have a good sized hunk of money sitting somewhere that can be used, but we have no way, well, we have no good way to utilize it. Okay. Okay. I always thought a trust fund would be a good idea because it was a, would be a place to park money and you didn't have to use it immediately. It could be there for years, right. but you have it and you know it's there and at some point in the future you can use it. Yeah. And so board, the board member was against but it. But I can't remember how you guys But, but the, 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 the trust fund has some complications to it. Our town well, council has suggested some other ideas and we simply have never acted on them because we've got this one little chunk of money that we could probably vote somehow mm -hmm. to utilize because we've got a couple one developer looking at some ideas and, and we only have had one subdivision come in after we adopted inclusionary zoning and in okay. that case that person was willing to put a uh, income restriction on a rental property that he owned okay. so <clears throat> that's how that one worked out mm -hmm. the other part of it is that the um, uh, you know, what's the, the committee, um, pulling a blank here, the one that Andy Morris Friedman is. Oh, the, uh, CPA? Yeah, Community Preservation Act Committee has a large sum, like in, set aside, million, in their affordable housing, uh, slot. And they've never used any of it because nothing's come to them. 
and, and the, the, C, the CPA is the CPA money is similar, but it has its own restrictions for affordable housing use. Okay. Well, getting back to the complexity of a trust, Whaley has one, Lever has one. I think Hadley can probably figure it out. But, and that doesn't mean to demean Whaley or Lever. So I guess the short answer is that if there is something going on discussing affordability, uh, I think we probably should be part of it. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree, um, especially since you have inclusionary housing, you want to kind of, uh, the, the zoning bylaw, you know, to address uh, affordable housing. Um, I, you know, I think it, I just await the town mm -hmm. administrator's uh, comments in regards to yep. Who else would be part of that committee, or who would be part of this um, working group that you know PVPC would be working yep. with you guys to establish I a report? Probably, I could probably be p part of that. Okay, yeah. I could, uh, would would one see that you know, maybe come to us initially with what your ideas are, sure. so then when we could discuss amongst us in a, in a regular planning board, maybe maybe even at our next meeting, what you're thinking of, what would what would this uh, so you're doing it's a study you said yeah it's a it's a report i think it was um initiated by the town administrator it was signed by the select board i do have a scope that was um out to be approved by the town administrator and the town select board um i'll share that with you um that's f as far as i haven't received you know any comment on it back um or a signature from the select board so okay. i'm just kind of you know I think just as with MS4, uh, it's been, for the select board, it's been all budget all the time sure. uh, for the last two months. Yeah. Um, yeah. If the select board has initiated it with a town administrator, then I think they may be the one that should be making the decision of who who is the owner of this study. Um, because I, we knew it was, you were being utilized for this, or they got a grant for it, or whatever mm -hmm. the word may be. Um, but even they were a little bit unsure who should the owner be of the sure. study. Yeah. Okay. A sizable amount of the uh, housing that's designated affordable is scheduled to lose that designation mm -hmm. in relatively near future. Mm -hmm. Do you have any strategies or leverage to keep keep those things on the rolls? Uh, I would have to look. In, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a housing professional. Um, well, it's, I, a, it's a concern for the town. Yo, sure. for oh, sure. Yeah. How much um, are we going to lose? Um, is it going to take what it takes only 10%? Mm, the yeah. first one is 25 units. Yeah. It'll be a dent. Yeah. But then over the next several years, there was enough being taken out to put us at the edge of being under compliance. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't want any 40B projects coming in. Um, that's why I'm, I'm looping in the housing planner. Um, to, to do that, but I figured that this is my first interaction with the board, um, working on planning board assistance and, and looking at your zoning bylaw and any other projects that you may have planned, um, and figured this would be a good time to address it. But I probably will continue, you know, working with the town administrator. My recommendation would be that a planning board member be part of that committee or members, um, because it is important. So whoever owns it, make that recommendation. <laughs> the, uh, in, in fact, the numbers of what is coming out of 40B over the next probably five to eight years, I think those numbers came from PVPC, if I remember. Yes, I probably. think so. Yeah. yeah. yeah who, so was that, that was, who was the woman who was... Jane Armington? No. 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 It she took over directly from Larry. Oh, Susan Weston. She's pretty sure. What? October 24th. Town oh, meeting. the town meeting? Uh, okay. 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 Sue Westa, yes. Yeah. I think she yeah, is. Sue, yes, it was Sue. Yes. Yeah, the numbers came from her. Yep. Okay. And, I'll take a look. And uh, she was the one that alerted us, and we raised the red flag to the Board of Selectmen, and that's how the uh, grant, the grant came the about, money. the request yeah. for the grant. Okay. Very good. So logistically, it's probably not too early to be thinking of the fiscal 21 work program. Part of what we turn to you for is insight on what's coming down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there's anything you think would be good for us to be working on, 
uh, we'd be happy to have that recommendation. I think if you look at the work programs for the last few years, they've always had more on them than we got to. Sure. And they're always being shifted in priorities. So um, you know, maybe even uh, doing a summary of um, uh, what some of the goals were for the last three or four years and we can um, take a look and yeah. see what's been done and what mm -hmm. maybe just got pushed aside. Okay. I think that contract runs out when in June, June 1st? June 30th. June 30th. Yeah. Fiscal year. Fiscal, so, fiscal year. Yeah, fiscal I'll probably June be coming with, um, you know, when you invite me next, uh, a uh, proposed scope. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, I mean, that's only, well, what's well, the end of the next month, so that's going to be yeah. here quickly. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing, uh, I think, did the the bill get into our box? I've got it right here. Okay. Yes. Um, there seems to be a little bit of uh, confusion that uh, apparently the, your bookkeeper or accounts receivable, whoever sent it out, emailed it directly to David Nixon. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Which meant that it took uh, a while to get back to us. Yeah. All, all, all bills, the Either, well, we only have one contract with us now, should be going directly to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Okay, it'll get paid much faster. Okay. You'll talk to Lisa about that. Yep. Okay. And also, as a reminder, this bill covers just like the first half of the year? Um, um, through three, upon, through three, five. Oh, okay. So again, just bearing in mind that we, as for a municipality, we have to get your get, get get us the next bill through the end of June, um, for no later. Well, get, get get us the bill through the end of June for the first Tuesday in June. Okay. We meet the first and third Tuesday of every month. Okay. And that way we can approve the bill at that meeting, and it'll get paid before the end of June. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Certainly no later than the third Tuesday. For sure. Otherwise, it carries over the next year, and we all get in trouble for that. Oh yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good point. Okay. Great. Anything else? Oh, you'll be talk. We'll be emailing yeah, back and I forth on the on the committee. Work, enjoy working with you. You're, I, you're, I'm you're, looking a, you're got a good demeanor, and I think you're very very sharp. Thanks. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to working with the board. Okay. Um, yeah. You you will find out. This planning board is different than many planning boards you may deal with. We have set some, we have set some, uh, that's right what I'm thinking of. We've been the, uh, that's what I'm thinking of. We, we, we've, we've created some different things, like our front, I mean, how we've, we've been using product PVPC as a contractor mm -hmm. for years. And after that, of course, Tim Brennan lives in Hadley, and it was such a success that I believe you do that now with a number of towns. Yep. And yep. we were the first one. We were the first one to put TDR in, at least in Western Mass. Mm -hmm. The Hadley TDR is probably the most successful TDR in the state. We've set aside hundreds of thousands of dollars through that mm -hmm. and been using that for APR. Um, designations and stuff. So a few things like that that we've done. That's great. And we're not really afraid to say no to large institutions. Mm -hmm. That's important. We don't we don't rubber stamp stuff. Sure. Yeah. We yeah. stopped five colleges in from putting in a Stalinist type structure in a middle class neighborhood in Hadley. Uh, and it's sitting in a old tobacco field in uh, Hatfield, which is where it belonged in the first place. We stopped Eversource from besmirching one of the most beautiful vistas in western Massachusetts. So we like to mix it up a little bit. Great. Yeah, I look forward to okay. my relationship with the board and, you know, look forward to the next couple of meetings. Okay. Great. Very okay. good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck. We'll see you. Okay. Let's see. We've got a couple of bills to pay. First of all, speaking of bills. We're not going to talk about this. We'll, we'll get to those. Okay. Let's, let's do them. these things first. Pay a bill to PVPC of 1000 which was 
the right one. Yep, one thousand one hundred forty-eight dollars seventy-five cents for the services through. I'm assuming it's uh, March March fifth, two thousand nineteen. One thousand one hundred forty-eight point seven five through March fifth. Yes, that's what their bill says. Motion to pay. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes for zero. One absent. Okay, a bill for Daily Hampshire Gazette for legal notice for the, uh, uh, what is it? I'm, I can't pronounce your name. It's Go Mohar. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't for know. Parmar there for their um, tearing down and rebuilding that uh, the motel up on uh, Spruce Hill over there. Oh, nice. The roadway, tear, tear, tearing down the roadway and rebuilding the uh, Marriott, I forgot what it's called, Marriott, uh, ex not an express, Marriott Town something or other. All right, $215.30. Motion to pay. Motion to pay. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0, 1 absent. Okay. We got, this is just, doesn't really affect us, but we got it anyway. We're paid at the end of every quarter, but Hadley is going to implement, you probably already know that one, Bill, a Quarterly, not a quarterly, a bi-weekly payroll system beginning, I guess in, I'm not sure when it starts, maybe in June. What is it, by week, monthly? Weekly? We, we get paid every three months, mm -hmm. so it doesn't really have any effect on us, but yeah. the town is going to institute a bi-weekly program, bi-weekly pay program in June. So, like I said. Did it used to be weekly? It used to be weekly for the town employees. Now it's going to be bi-weekly. Doesn't really, I said, doesn't really affect this. They're going to have to start having class on budgeting, I guess. Well, maybe we have been invited to attend. That's just that's just the same thing. That's just multiple copies. That's just this is all recycle. Um, we have been invited by the American Legion to attend their annual parade. Uh, Memorial Day Parade on Sunday, May 26, 2019 at 2 p.m. In case you wish to uh, uh, march in a parade or participate one way or another, you can contact the Legion and or just show up and march in it. Is that, is that your birthday? My, it is. is. It's my birthday it's too. Your birthday too. Yeah. So, uh, oh, the uh, We've got a lady, Joy Duprault, is going to be here to discuss our FEMA system and other things. And they've given us, a, she's given us a choice of three days, May 28th, June 11th, or June 18th. Those are all Tuesdays in the afternoon. And there have been a bunch of people that have been invited. Um, town administrator, building inspector, conservation, DPW, town uh, planning board, any town engineer if we have one, and others, conservation, okay, I already said conservation. And most people prefer May 28th, so I guess they're the ones that can attend or will be attending said if we could make it May 28th, they prefer May 28th. So I said at this meeting, um, I plan on attending. And May 28th is fine with me. Anybody else that wants to attend? I'll be attending. Okay. But anybody who wants to attend, this is not just one new member of the board. This can be... Where is it held? It's going to be... It's going to start, I think, right up here. And I'm not sure... Um, they said that this would not yeah. involve uh, site visits. Yeah. yeah. You can you can actually take it and read it if you want, if you're interested in attending. I think I sent one you around. Said, you sent to everybody. Uh, okay. So I'll reply back that May 28th is okay. And whoever shows up, shows up. We don't need to post it because we're not going to make any motions or any kind of formal meeting. It's an informational stuff. And um, then it takes about an hour and a half to two hours, depending 
any questions and everything else we discuss. Uh, that takes care of that. Oh, the uh, Christian Stanley is trying to set a bunch of several different new committees. They do not have select board approval um, to do any of them yet. One of them that he has uh, said that the planning board um, may want to basically take charge of would be an economic development committee. And I, was, I sent the email around that I would volunteer for that committee. Um, they want to report back to the next, at the, at the, I think he said the 2020 annual town meeting. So in case that committee does get set up, I just want, before I jumped into the gun, I just want to make sure that the board has no problem with me taking on that committee. I don't know what economic development means or what he means by it, because economic development is a massive description of a lot of things. Well, it could mean anything well, from... Economic development can mean economic destruction if you get the right people trying to run it. Well, okay. I, I suspect you probably can spend until Springtown meeting discussing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, what, and, and I agree. It's and I mean, it could be anything from uh, subsidized housing to super industrial and anything in between. Yeah, right. So unless, the, so unless the select board give the committee some very hard guidance, I agree with Bill. The best you'll get out of the annual town meeting is a agreement from this committee on what they want to even look at. Because it could be, who knows? I mean, depending who's on the committee. I think we saw economic development tonight. Um, you know, that's, that's one of them, yeah. No. I mean, various. Everybody that came in here with various types of economic like improvement and like development. development in North Alley, take it for what it's worth. You know, so um, anyways, we'll see what, what comes out of the select one on, and on the committee, if it even gets through. So remember that we did have, uh, it was something the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission suggested, uh, we are going to have a development summit. And it was going to be representatives of Conservation Commission, Planning Board, Select Board, and we were going to meet every three months or something like that. I think we had one meeting and uh, never reconvened. Um, so it, it's something that needs um, it needs to get traction. Right. Um, okay. You know, unbeknownst to the Midtown meeting, they took action on climate change already. They decided to improve the system of ditches in town. If climate change is here, it's here. And it doesn't matter how many light bulbs you put it, change. Okay, it's here. And you gotta you gotta deal with what you got. And one of them is preparing for stormwater drainage. I, Period. I, I Great absolutely, job, town meeting. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah, All exactly. right. Before we forget, we didn't set a new time for PVPC. Do you want we, we, we they could. That would be next the first or first two of the month. Well, okay. We just didn't confirm oh, it before oh, they left. Okay, okay. So, I will I'll confirm it with Kim. Okay. For June. What is that? June, June 4th. June 4th. I'll let them know. And the first two of each month thereafter. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, the notice that was you people received in the mail. Let me explain this. To enact the zoning bylaw, I am required by state law to send out notices to a whole bunch of state agency, local agency, local towns, etc. I notify them in writing in mail. That was done. Uh, got to be posted in the town hall properly. That was done. It's got to go into the local newspaper for two publications in two successive weeks prior to the public hearing. That went into the Gazette. The publication dates were 220 and 227. Once the zoning bylaw is passed and approved by town meeting, Jessica contacts me and there's a whole checklist that the two of us need to fill out to confirm publication dates, legal notices, mailings, etc., etc., etc. And part of that is to send into the, these all go to the Attorney General who ultimately approved the zoning bylaw. 
Part of that is to get copies of the legal notices that were in the Daily Ham the local newspaper, in our case, the Daily Hampshire Gazette. And I go into the Gazette archive. There's a special special uh, website we go to with a password and sick, all kind of good stuff. And I get the publication dates, save the page, the entire page of the legal notice, email them to Jessica. They go to the Attorney General. Case set. So I go for the 2.20 um, publication date. No legal notice for our public hearing. I says, I got, I got the invoice. The invoice specifically says publication 2.20, 2.27. I go to the publication date of 2.27 in the Gazette. There's our legal notice with publication dates of 2.20 and 227 listed on the bottom of the legal notice. Mm -hmm. I can't find our legal notice on 220. Of course, this is on the remote website that's not the Daily Hampshire Gazette. What I find on the 220 notice advertising page is ads and legal notices that are supposed to be published on 221. So I go to 221 date, they have exactly the same page as the 220 date. I say, okay, this website somehow scrambled the paper publication dates. I emailed Daily Hampshire Gazette Classified Department, please get me just what I told you I found. The Gazette replies back, we never published your legal notice on 220. The entire page of 221 was published on 220. 221 published on 220. The 220 advertising page was never put into the Gazette. They were apologizing, they're going to refund their money, they're going to redo the legal notices for free and also the kind of stuff which is, that's fine, that's just, just good customer service. What do we do about not publishing on properly? Yeah. Through no fault of ours, it was never published on the first publication date. I don't know if the Attorney General will grant us relief for that mistake because it was not ours, it was the local newspaper. We didn't catch it at the time and we caught it after the town meeting date. They may say, okay, there's ways they can overrule certain things. However, in case they don't grant us relief, we're re-advertising for these zoning bylaws beginning this Friday and next Friday. That will lock in the zoning for six months. So that if this is a total disaster, it'll be on the fall town meeting and we're gonna re-vote this all again and zoning will be locked in. That's why this is going on, okay? Oh, isn't that does town council have any idea when we would hear back from the state? Um, town council has nothing to do with oh, the okay. state. J test, t typically, they have 90 days to reply back to us. So the last time for the fall town meeting when we sent out the uh, uh, extending the moratorium to June 1st, because the moratorium expires June 1st on the marijuana bylaw. That's why I want to get it in this month, because the way zoning works, zoning locks in from the first date of publication in a newspaper which is before the moratorium ends, so at least we lock in the zoning and we use it that way. Um, but the fall town meeting was in early October. We didn't hear back from the Attorney General until what? Almost January? I think so, yep. So about three, almost almost three months after the, after, after the uh, public, after the uh, town meeting was when they replied to us. And at that point they said that there was a publishing error Right, there was in that one that it was a day too it late. Was, it was a posting error um, with the town clerk posting it in the the uh, the town hall. Was that was that marijuana shop opened up yet when this error happened? It's a it, joke. It, it's not open, it's not open uh, yet. They're working on it. So the attorney general has a, a procedure. They put a hold on it, and they uh, so effectively it's still. Uh, it's a live moratorium because it hasn't been rejected by the attorney general. It's on hold, um, and to and they allow that for technical errors, and 
the cure is you, you have to publish the entire bylaw in the paper and see if anyone objects. Um, that would be costly. Yeah, t 11 pages will probably cost thousands, thousands of dollars. But that should be on the Gazette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That should be on the Gazette. Yeah, right. Shouldn't be our cost. It should be Ooh, the cost. Yep. Yeah, that, that's that's true. That's we, we may be able to tell. This is your error that we need. That's right. Sure. You're right. Yep. If, we, if if that's how it comes down to, I'll go out to the Gazette absolutely. for that. We're not publishing. This is not our error that we've got to publish it. They'd probably print us a special insert. I don't care what they do. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. It, it would, it would, it'll be pretty much one page of the Gazette. Because well, when we, this happened a number of years ago with a bylaw. It cost, this would probably was it going to be at least 12 years ago, Bill, right? Mm -hmm. Cost $600. And after we did it, when we got the bill, Bill says, you know, that was not something that we needed to do. We probably would have been much less expensive for the town if we just re-voted re it at the next town meeting. This bylaw is a little bit different. Just put them on notice. And if it's required to do it, it's... Well, I'm not going to put them on notice. I want to see what the town, what town what attorney general says. And they fully admit it. It's, I mean, it's, they admit that it was their error. It, it, it's obvious. I, I yeah. let them know it right up front. Including everybody. They, they build for well, 20 I wonder, I, I wonder what they're going to do about that. But I, I mean, that's, not my, that's not my question. To, 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 but there was, <coughs> on that particular, well, I know it was supposed to be on, on 220. I have no idea it was supposed to be on 220. I'd have to go <laughs> through multiple different gazettes to see if there's any duplication dates. Of course, there's always dates that are just published one time, some things that are just published once. Yep. Um, and because that did make the comment that I was the first one to notice this mistake, which is kind of surprising. And that was over three months ago, and uh, oh, that's two, two and a half months ago. And I'm surprised that both well, presently there wasn't anything that important being published that day. I don't know how they check. Yeah. Well. There are always legal notices in there, and there's always a reason why they're posted. So yeah. somebody who didn't check is probably sworn to something that didn't happen. Yeah. I published. Of course I published, yeah, because yeah. that told me I published. So, I mean, the right thing, for, I, was, I was going to, I was thinking, I said, you know, maybe we could get away with this. I says, no, 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 that's not the right way to do this. Do it the right way. It wasn't posted. It wasn't our fault. That's it. So that's why, long explanation, but that's why the amendments are going to be posted again. We'll have another public hearing. We'll lock in the zoning. Hopefully we can do a workaround, like Bill said, with technical errors. And, uh, you know, I, I, would, I doubt that the Attorney General would reject it for something that wasn't our fault. But stranger things have occurred, too. Say, uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Right, Bill? Yeah. You know, the only thing that I'm thinking to myself about is not looking at the Gazette on 220 to seeing that it wasn't there. It's not your job. But I seldom check to see if I know. I mean, they, they've always been, and even she said this is the first time that it's happened. Well, it's the first time they've ever been caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I doubt it's happened before, but, anyways, I have. Nothing else. I have nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. Thank you, John.